Many churches have been scrambling over the past couple of weeks as we all try and do our best to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic and the suspension of our in-person church services. And you're not alone if you've recently gone into Google or YouTube and frantically searched up live streaming setups for smaller churches or something similar to that. And look, I get it. Our Sunday experiences generally take precedent here. But what's amazing about social is that it isn't confined to a service time like an in-person gathering is. It doesn't have a start or end time. And if your Sunday service is, let's say, one hour online each week, that means that there are still 167 hours beyond that service every single week where you can connect to people online using social. And as social media usage spikes because of social distancing measures, those 167 hours are even more rich with opportunity than they were a month ago. And what I don't want us to do is become so fixated on what we're publishing on Sundays that we forsake Monday to Saturday. So in this video, I'll outline for you a seven day social media calendar for your church, the coronavirus edition. And this calendar is repeatable. So if you choose, you can use it as a framework for your social media Media content rhythms for the foreseeable future. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Brady Shearer. This is Pro Church Tools, a channel dedicated to helping your church navigate the biggest communication shift in 500 years. So please consider subscribing. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. Let's begin filling out our social media calendar. On Mondays and Wednesdays, we're going to post what I call irresistible questions. These are lighthearted conversation starters that tend to generate a ton of engagement, specifically comments. One fear I have for our churches in the coming weeks is that we're going to spend so much time talking at our congregations and we'll rarely get to hear from them. Be mindful of this because your social pages and posts are not billboards. They don't exist to be looked upon and admired by others. And that's why the purpose of an irresistible question post, and we'll get to specific examples in a moment, is to generate conversation amongst the people connected to your church online. And just think about how important something like this is in a prolonged period of social distancing. This may be one of the few ways that we can still rub shoulders with the people in our churches that we're used to seeing normally on a week-to-week -week basis. And consider what your social feed looks like right now, because if it's anything like mine, the vast majority of content you're seeing is directly related to the coronavirus and its effects. There's a ton of negativity out there right now. The routines of society have been completely turned upside down, and out of that comes uncertainty, anxiety, and even fear. And what's amazing about a simple, lighthearted question post is that it's a breath of fresh air for many of our social media timelines. It's a return to normalcy, even for just a moment. And believe me, this is a welcome reprieve for many of us. So what kind of questions work best? Well, there are really three distinctives to consider. Number one, your question needs to be specific. Number two, it needs to be low risk. And number three, if your question can contain some element of pseudo controversy, that's when your engagement will truly soar. So here's the lead pastor of a church that posted an irresistible question post we gave him. It went like this, true or false, oatmeal raisin is the best tasting cookie. And within the first 18 hours, the post got 130 comments, 130 comments. Why are people so passionate about cookies? Well, when executed correctly, this is what an irresistible question post can do because this question is specific. Stating your opinion is extremely low risk. Right? This isn't politics, right? We're talking about cookies. And it's purposely framed to be controversial. Did you see that? The majority of people would never consider oatmeal raisin cookies to be the best cookie. So leading with that is what makes the question irresistible because people feel the need to right the wrong they're seeing. Now you might be wondering, what business does a church or pastor have asking questions about cookies? What does that have to do with faith or spirituality? To which I would say, why do our churches host potlucks? Why do we take our student ministries snow tubing? Why do we have small groups that go bowling together? Why do some churches have gymnasiums? Why do our VBS weeks contain games and sports? Because church is about doing life together with other people and Christ is at the center of that. But from that foundation comes a diverse tapestry of life experiences. And I don't know about you, but I wanna share all of that with the people in my faith community. With that being said, I do highly recommend integrating faith-focused question posts into your weekly rhythms as well. Questions like, what's a worship song that has helped you feel closer to God? Or what's a familiar Bible verse you return to in times when you need it most? These are awesome for creating space for the people in your church to share their faith experiences with others in your congregation, which is also something we could all truly benefit from right now. 
and to make Mondays and Wednesdays on your social media calendar as easy as possible for you, I've put together a Google Doc of 39 different irresistible question posts that, like the previous example I shared with you, have proven to work for churches. Will you get 130 comments on each of these? Now that might be pushing it, but you will see engagement spikes nonetheless. The link to that Google Doc is in the description below, or you can head directly to the URL prochurchtools.com slash questions. And if you used two of those posts every week on Mondays and Wednesdays, seeing as there are 39 in that Google Doc, you'd be set for 19 weeks. So that's taken care of. Let's look forward now to Tuesdays and Thursdays. On these days, we are going to host Q&A inspired live streams anywhere from five to 10 minutes in length. And don't get hung up on the tech of a live stream here. The ideal way to do this is to just grab your mobile device and go live on social directly from your phone. You know, if you wanted, you could always pre-record these segments and debut them as mock live stream premieres, but I think there's actually something more special to the underproduced feel of streaming directly from your phone because it feels more personal and intimate. And that's what we're going for right now because we can't meet in person. So how can we make digital connections feel more personal? Well, a live stream directly from your phone looks just like a one-on-one -on -one FaceTime, whereas a pre-recorded, perfectly lit, produced segment feels like watching TV. And I want to lean into the feeling of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, not a professional broadcast. And then for the content, the springboard for these live streams is going to be a question that someone has sent in ahead of time. And the question is the driving force behind each live stream. And this again is because I don't want our churches to just be talking at our congregations. We want to create space for dialogue. So using a pre-selected question as the motivation for the stream, it's a great way to do that. The other reason a live stream is important is because people will get to see your face and it's another time and place for us to gather together. So let's talk about a couple of ways that this could go. Your live stream could be devotional in nature. Let's imagine you get a question from someone in your church and they say they're feeling anxious or fearful in the face of the coronavirus and what that means for the economy and their employment or retirement, their future. Your live stream format could be as simple as presenting that question at the beginning and then saying, okay, how does the word of God say we should respond in times like this? And then jump into a devotional from there. Another direction you could take could be an ask me anything AMA format. So maybe you get a question from someone in your church that says, hey, pastor, how are you and your family handling this time of social isolation? And then you could show them around your home a bit and talk about what an average day in your life has been like lately. You know, everyone is working to find a new normal right now. We're all going through that together. And so as a leader in your church, people want to know, OK, how is he or she dealing with this? Another idea would be to use a question as a springboard for group prayer over a live stream. So maybe you get a question from someone in your church that goes something along the lines of, hey, pastor, my hours have been cut at work. I'm really struggling with what the future might hold for me and my family. Could you pray for me? So as the live stream begins, you read out that prayer request, pray for that person, and then open it up for everyone joining you live. Ask for people to post their three word prayer request in the comments in real time, and then respond to each one individually while live. Now, these are just three ideas, but my hope is that you can see how versatile this format can be. The key is to use a question from a person in your church as the springboard. And if you're curious on how to gather these questions, there's so many different avenues to consider. You can ask directly using the question sticker on Instagram stories. You can look to your church's email accounts and just mine those for questions that have come in organically since the COVID-19 pandemic began. You can do the same with the comment sections on your social posts. You can post a question on social earlier that day on the day that you're planning to go live. Hey church, I'll be going live later today on a Q&A live stream. Ask me anything. So many different options here to explore to get those questions in. Okay. Let's keep it moving. We're now on to Friday in our seven day social calendar and Fridays I've got reserved for highlighting a local small business in your community. You and I both know local small businesses, retailers, coffee shops, restaurants have all been hit particularly hard by COVID-19 as many have been forced to close or operate with reduced hours or even just operate within certain limitations. We want to come alongside those that are hurting and be the church and shine a bright light in our community and say, yeah, okay, we're going through a hard time, but we're all in this together and we're going to get through it. So as an example, below our offices here at Pro Church Tools is a new restaurant called Counterpart. They make some of the best food in the city, but because of COVID-19, they've been forced to close their seating area. They are, however, doing family style meals for takeout. So a simple post idea would be to repost this restaurant's takeout announcement on social 
or make it a bit more personal. Grab takeout for you and your family and post a photo of you enjoying a Friday night dinner at home, highlighting the great food from this local restaurant and talking a bit about how we want to support them during this tough time. And by doing this, you can foster unity and togetherness in your region and use your church's social platform for the good of others that are struggling. So now we're into the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to assume that you've got Sunday taken care of with your digital church experience, whatever that may look like. And then for Saturday, I'd recommend just posting a momentum building post for what's to come on Sunday. We call this the church invitation post. And it's something I recommend when your church is hosting your in-person gatherings, but I think it works in this case also, especially because whatever it is you are doing for church on Sundays, it's still going to be new to many people in your congregation. It's not yet part of their regular routine. So a Saturday reminder that mentions the time that you're meeting and what to expect and what to prepare for is helpful for building momentum and also just serving as a reminder as your congregation finds their footing in this new weekly routine. Remember, through all of this, for however long it lasts and for whatever may lie ahead, your church's mission is not to host a service. Don't mistake method for mission. Innovation thrives in limitation. Got no in-person gatherings for your church, the comforts of normalcy are gone. You were made for this. You can get through this and you can lead your church. 10 to 15 years ago, you would not have had the opportunity to connect with your congregation online in the ways that we can today. And if our churches won't be able to assemble in person for an extended period of time, creating content for digital platforms is the way forward. So use this social media calendar as the framework for what to post on social. Sunday is important, yes, but there are still 167 hours beyond that Sunday service where you can reach people also. So let's seize that time for the sake of the gospel. Oh, and if you are still watching at this point, it really does mean the world to me. As a thank you, there's a download link in the description below to a countdown prayer post for social media that is specifically in response to the coronavirus. So please feel free to download that and use it on any of your social platforms. And if you're looking for more done-for-you social posts, head on over to nucleus.social. There you'll find 30 more done-for-you social posts that you can gain access to and start using right away. There's no credit card needed. Just start a free trial of Nucleus and you'll get access to each of those posts for free along with their Photoshop and After Effects source files so you can even customize them to your liking. Again, that link is nucleus.social. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon. Alright.